in for red Aimed at your head as if your name was Osama You got a chain, I'm not hesitating to put you in a funeral home With a bullet in your tongue, I'm hot like lava You got a problem, I got a problem solver And his name is Revolver It's like a deadly game of freeze tag I touch you with the 40 for magnet Frozen inside of my body bag Nobody iller than this great god filler Infantilla, cause I'm a natural born killer in a profession supposedly full of tough guys and badasses, there is one man who is feared immensely by fans as well as colleagues throughout his 25 year plus career. A man who's known for being just as vicious in the ring as he is out of the ring. A man who is known for constantly taking things way too far. A man who has legitimately tried to kill his opponent in the ring on several occasions. A man who loved cocaine and cutting people more than he loved most things in life. A man whose name is synonymous with controversy. The notorious, the ultra-violent, the downright sick and twisted New Jack. But there were legit reasons as to why New Jack was such a disturbed individual. New Jack was born as Jerome Young in North Carolina in 1963 and had a very turbulent and rough childhood. His dad was an alcoholic and his mom was a serial cheater, so this caused the two to butt heads often, most of the time with it being physical, with young Jerome there to witness it all. Things got so bad in fact that when Jerome was 5 years old, his dad found out that his mom was cheating on him again and his dad stabbed her 5 times right in front of little Jerome, which is absolutely insane. Luckily, Jerome's mom survived this, but just 5 months after this, when his mom was trying to leave his dad for good, his dad shot her in the back of the leg as she tried to leave while she was holding young Jerome. Luckily, she survived again and just a few months later, Jerome's dad passed away from a heart attack. Seeing all of this dysfunction in his family was very detrimental to the young Jerome, and New Jack has stated that the trauma that he experienced in those formative years of his life was the reason as to why he became such a supremely violent individual later on in life. As Jerome grew up, he was often in trouble, but when he was 15 years old, he committed his first armed robbery with his mom's gun at his local convenience store. The habit didn't stop there though, because him and his friends began to rob local stores, gas stations, sporting goods stores, and jewelry stores. This continued for about 3 years, but eventually this sort of lifestyle caught up with him and when he was 18 years old, he and his friends got caught and convicted for armed robbery, in which Jerome spent 2 years in prison from the time he was 18 years old to the time he was 20 years old. After Jerome got out of prison, he worked briefly as a truck driver and then he spent the next decade as a bounty hunter. For those who don't know what a bounty hunter is, it's someone who catches wanted criminals for the police for compensation. This job is not for everyone though because it requires putting yourself in dangerous situations that could potentially kill you and so by extension, it's a job for hardened bad motherfuckers. But New Jack was that guy. There's even a rumor that New Jack actually killed about 4 people in his bounty hunter days but he later denied this on camera but then again, why would he admit to killing somebody while being on film? He was mainly in bounty hunting for the money as the money was pretty good and in his chase for money, it brought him to his next venture in his life, the big bad world of professional wrestling. When Jerome was around 30 years old, he started to train to become a professional wrestler and when he was watching the movie New Jack City, he liked it so much that he appropriated the name New Jack and used it as his wrestler name. But when he had just started, New Jack wasn't quite the New Jack we know. He got his first big break in wrestling 2 years after he debuted and that was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, which was owned and run by the infamous Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette however had a prompt for New Jack and his tag team partner, Mustafa Saeed, who were called the gangsters, and that was to act as racist as possible to white people and New Jack happily obliged. He took this to the next level in Smoky Mountain Wrestling as he was constantly dissing and roasting the all white crowd for being white. This was very significant because this was a time in America where racial tensions were extremely high as it was around the time around the OJ Simpson murder trial and the brutal beating of Rodney King by the police. New Jack made sure to work these real life tense racial tensions into his act by praising OJ Simpson and recreating the Rodney King beating with a white wrestler and so because racial tension was so high at this time, New Jack and his partner Mustafa Saeed would constantly be called the n-word by the crowd at every single show. This bothered him but he ultimately got used to it and he dug his heels into this gimmick even further. New Jack clearly didn't give a f and the more he was racist toward the white people, the more they were racist toward him. It was like a vicious cycle but this vicious cycle was working as New Jack's name got bigger and bigger and eventually in 1995, he got an offer to wrestle for Extreme Championship Wrestling ECW, of which he accepted. 
and in ECW, he found his home as their style of wrestling was right up his alley. He was already known for crossing the boundaries in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, but in ECW, he cranked that up several notches. While WWE was a much more safer, more palatable style of wrestling, ECW was WWE's bastard cousin who was a darn troublemaker. ECW was a brand of wrestling that was grittier, edgier, bloodier than anything seen in wrestling at that time. It was a promotion that prided itself on going too far and New Jack was notorious for going too far, so he fit right in. In ECW, New Jack solidified himself as a hardcore legend. He was incredibly intense and his demeanor and aura just screamed badass and, and don't f with me because I will cut you. New Jack was incredibly innovative in the hardcore sense and was even the first wrestler to start using a staple gun in matches. He was entertaining and charismatic in a sick and twisted way. He was known for his bombastic promos and for taking spectacular bumps and diving from outrageously high heights constantly. He was the epitome of blood and guts and he blurred the line between working and shooting so much so that he often overstepped the boundaries of wrestling and crossed into borderline actual assault. When New Jack was in ECW, this is where the drug problem that dogged him throughout the rest of his life started. New Jack would notoriously always snort coke before his matches and that enabled him to jump off of very high structures. Anybody that ever knew me knew I snorted coke before my matches. How in the fuck do you think I was going up 30 feet and diving off shit? New Jack was so addicted to coke that he would spend about $5,000 a month on this bad habit. But this wasn't his only drug of choice as he even popped 4 tabs of acid one time just before a match. You might be asking yourself, why? Well, because it's New Jack and he does whatever the fuck he wants to do. All of this seems really awesome on the surface, but New Jack was a deeply troubled man and that's what caused him to overstep boundaries from time to time. He had a dark side and this dark side provoked the violent and dangerous monster within him. When this dark side came out, New Jack became lost in his character and he would seek to cause very serious and sometimes even fatal harm to his opponents in the ring. And the first time New Jack's demons really came to show was in the mass transit incident. In 1996 at an ECW show, the gangsters were scheduled to face off against Axel Rotten and Devon Dudley. But Sadly, Axel Rodden couldn't make it and his replacement was a wrestler called Mass Transit. It turns out Mass Transit, real name Eric Kulos, was a minor being 17 years old at the time the match took place. But instead he told Paul Heyman, the creator and owner of ECW that he was 22 years old and had a couple of years of wrestling experience and that he was trained by wrestling legend Killer Kowalski. When in reality, he wasn't trained by Kowalski and only had a couple of matches under his belt and knew absolutely nothing about hardcore wrestling. Paul Heyman inserted him into the match to be Axel Rotten's replacement on a false pretense. The giddy adolescent then naively went into the locker room and started barking requests at New Jack to do in the match. And this was a huge mistake because in wrestling, it's tradition for newbies to just shut the f up and listen. And so New Jack was really pissed off about it. He refused all of Kulos's requests except one. Kulos asked New Jack to make him bleed and New Jack happily obliged. In wrestling, to get blood in a match, wrestlers usually use a razor blade to their forehead. New Jack wasn't going to blade him with a razor blade, instead he had a surgical scalpel. And with New Jack being pissed off at Eric Kulos, high on coke and New Jack just being New Jack, he had to take this too far and in the ring, New Jack cut Mass Transit's forehead so deeply that blood was literally squirting out of his head. The cut was so deep that it cut two of his arteries and caused him to get 50 stitches. They savagely attacked me, they crucified me in front of a thousand people. I have no feeling from here to here. I have like an indention in my head from where all the nerves died. Basically, New Jack went to town on his forehead. The show ended up getting cancelled as medics had to attend to Eric Kulos and a couple of months later, Kulos and his family pressed charges for assault and battery against New Jack. But because it was found out that he lied to get himself into the match, New Jack was acquitted and dodged jail time just narrowly. Kulos's family then tried to sue New Jack in a civil lawsuit, but then just a few years later, Eric Kulos died after complications during gastric bypass surgery. This incident was initially harmful to New Jack's career, but he eventually just added to his growing legend of savagery. His name was growing bigger and bigger, and fans were expecting him to do crazier and crazier things, and New Jack was more than happy to do that. He was constantly upping the ante and on one night this all caught up with him as he had a match with Vic Grimes. In this match, they were supposed to both dive off a high scaffold onto tables. But at the last second, live on pay per view, while they were on the scaffold, Vic Grimes chickened out and said he can't do it. This really pissed New Jack off and he resorted to literally pulling Vic Grimes off of the scaffold with him and onto the table. This however did not end well because Vic Grimes landed right on New Jack's head and this caused New Jack to get a fractured skull, brain damage, permanent blindness in his right eye and a broken leg. 
He recovered in the hospital for many months after this tragic incident, but he never fully recovered because for the rest of his life, he would be plagued by chronic headaches and insomnia. But on the bright side, at least he didn't die. After New Jack had recovered as much as he could, he returned back to ECW. A year after the incident, there was a rematch scheduled between New Jack and Vic Grimes, but New Jack had revenge on his mind. This is mainly because Vic Grimes did not apologize to him or even check up on him in the hospital in the months after the incident. They were scheduled to wrestle in an even more dangerous match, with there being a spot from a scaffold that was 40 feet above the ring with 12 tables below. So it was guaranteed to be extreme, but knowing New Jack, especially with revenge on his mind, he had to be more than extreme. On the day of the match, New Jack went and bought a stun gun, and while high as f on coke and on top of the 40 foot scaffold, New Jack tased Vic without it being agreed to beforehand, and then he threw Vic off the 40 foot scaffold with the legitimate intention to kill him. I want him to land on a post. The turnbook post. I was hoping that he landed head first on top of that post. So I wanted him to die. I ain't got no love for Vic. Luckily and amazingly, Vic crash landed onto the ropes and into the ring. But what's crazy about this situation is that if New Jack just threw Vic a little harder, then he would have for sure been dead. The only injury that Vic walked away from this match was a dislocated ankle and a couple of scratches. After this incident and in 2001, unfortunately ECW declared bankruptcy and had to shut down. This really sucked because ECW was New Jack and New Jack was ECW. They were later acquired by WWE but WWE didn't want to go anywhere near New Jack despite his massive name value in wrestling. WWE considered his immense drug problems, his tendency to go too far and the backlash, bad publicity and potential lawsuits that they would have received if they had signed him. So they ultimately decided to shut the door in his face. So this left New Jack to the independent scene where there was money but substantially less. But New Jack was still New Jack and his thirst for violence was never quite satisfied. And this brought him to his next victim, sorry opponent, Gypsy Joe, who was 72 years old at the time of their match. On the day of the match between the two, Gypsy Joe came up to New Jack and he said he could teach him a few things, and Jack saw this as condescending and got pissed off about it. In the match, Joe, as per his gimmick as the man who could feel no pain, was no selling New Jack's offense, and this enraged the already high on coke New Jack. This caused him to legitimately start beating the ever living shit out of this poor old man. He was hitting him with chairs, a baseball bat, and was absolutely brutalizing him in a savage manner. It was clearly a lopsided fight. The crowd started to hurl racial insults at New Jack, and the more they did that, the more enraged he got and the more he beat up Gypsy Joe. This was supposed to be a wrestling match, but it crossed over into straight up assault. The match ended with this assault and the two never spoke again after this. But New Jack was still hungry for blood. About a year after this incident, he was scheduled to have a match against a wrestler called Hunter Red and prior to this match, he tried to have a talk with Hunter Red in order for them to be on the same page with regards to the match. But Red was dismissive of him and this pissed New Jack off immensely. It should be common knowledge at this point that it's not a good idea to piss New Jack off for a match. As the match started, Hunter Red started to hit New Jack with stiff punches and this enraged the high on cocaine New Jack even more. So then New Jack proceeded to whip out a knife from his pants and stab Hunter Red about 9 times, around the head, neck and upper body. New Jack was notorious for going too far but this was on a different level. This time there was no escaping the fact that he blatantly stabbed a man 9 times with many witnesses there. Naturally and unsurprisingly, he was charged with felony charges such as aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault to commit murder. In simple, New Jack was in big, big trouble and was facing up to 15 years in prison for his actions. But his situation actually turned around because while New Jack was behind bars, Hunter Red went to see him and he said he'd drop the charges against him if he agreed to train him and do a tour of wrestling matches against him around the Florida circuit. New Jack agreed to this and Red dropped the charges. He was then released but then on the very same day he walked out as a free man, he left Florida, never to speak to Hunter Red ever again. Now that's pretty savage. New Jack continued wrestling throughout the years and he was always in the spotlight for the wrong reasons like getting into backstage fights and legitimately hurting his opponents. But his body was giving out on him so he was constantly going in and out of retirement for the rest of his career. The years of taking outrageous and dangerous bumps and heavy drug usage had caught up to him and he was deteriorating in real time. New Jack's heart was especially pretty bad and he had to change his lifestyle because of the years of damage he did to his heart with heavy cocaine usage. New Jack was laying off the drugs but he had to take prescribed painkillers to help him with the pain from various injuries he had sustained throughout his career. And on one day when New Jack was walking home from a wrestling event, he collapsed and was taken to the hospital and doctors found blood clots throughout his legs, back and lungs. The end was pretty near for New Jack and towards the end of his life, he was still an active wrestler but he wasn't always available as he couldn't accept all bookings because he was in very poor health and was often bedridden due to his heart problems and his failing eyesight. 
And on March 14, 2021, New Jack died of a heart attack in his North Carolina home at the age of 58. And that is the story of the most violent and dangerous wrestler of all time. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos. But anyway, goodbye.